once again, we want to welcome you to another episode of Whispering Hope Daily Stubble School Lesson Review. I'm your host, Vaughn Joseph, for this beautiful Tuesday morning. And as usual, we have in our midst, we have Elders Andy David and Elder God. Welcome, Elder David. Thank you. Good morning. Glad to be here as usual. And to the Rose Among the Thorns, welcome, Sister Gordon. Good morning. Good morning. Happy to be here. Welcome, everyone. All right. Wonderful. Well, folks, we're going to get started. I'm going to ask Elder David to read for us our memory text for this week. And then afterwards, Sister Jacqueline Gordon is going to give us our opening prayer. Our memory text is taken from Deuteronomy 9, chapter 9 and verse 7. Uh, reading from the New King James Version, it says, Remember, do not forget how you provoke the Lord your God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that you departed from the land of Egypt until you came to this place. You have been rebelling against the Lord. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, we are so thankful for another brand new morning, a morning whereby you have blessed us, dear God. And Lord, as we begin to open your word, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will just come and teach us your will and your way. So that at the end of God, all of us will be your obedient children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So thank you, elders, for the preliminaries. Today, it is uh, Tuesday, we're looking at the subtopic for today is take heed lest you forget. Take heed lest you forget. And we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 9 and 23. Now, we would have looked at uh, the lesson yesterday as to not to forget. But remember, and in English terms or in English language terms, that's a double imperative. Don't forget and remember. But today we're looking at take heed lest you forget. Elder David, what does this conjure up in your mind when you see a heading like take heed lest you forget? And I want to focus specifically on the first two words, take heed lest you forget. You know, you ask what it conjure up. You know, there are times when, when I was much younger and my parents might have warned me about something. You know, they said, look, take heed, be warned. So it conjures up that kind of thing in my mind. All right, Elder God, no, what about you? <laughs> yes, I, I concur with Elder David. Uh, much emphasis is placed here. If you forget anything else, please don't forget what I am about to tell you. So emphasis is being placed, and the emphasis will learn more this morning. All right, so now let's look and see what specifically Moses is talking about because the book of Deuteronomy is basically Moses' last sermons or speakings or speeches to the children of Israel as they were about to cross over into the promised land. Moses is giving them lots of reminders for them to remember as they enter into the promised land, the God that has led them. So, Elder God, read for us Deuteronomy chapter 4, and we're going to consider verses 9 and verse 23. And we're going to see what is it that Moses is saying to the children of Israel from God that they should take heed of. Read for us verses 9 and verse 23. Verse 9. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thine heart all the days of thine life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. And verse 23, take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God had forbidden thee. All right. So... Here we see now, Elder Gordon, you just read those two passages of scripture. What is it that is so pertinent, as you and Elder David have said at the top of the lesson review this morning, what is so pertinent, what is so pressing that Moses is telling the children of Israel, by God, 
to take heed? What do we see coming out in these texts? And uh, unravel that for us a little bit. What is coming out here to me is God's um, intentional effort to instruct his children into the ways, into God's ways. Moses reiterating the commandments over and over again. And the beauty, I mean, I, I will call this a love commandment, love for us. And the beauty is if we choose God's way, we have blessings, we have life, we have even curse that our enemies may place upon us. According to Deuteronomy chapter 4, it will go back on them. All God wants is for us to be obedient to his way. So it's a matter of us not forgetting. Moses is here instructing them and he's appealing to them not to forget God's instructions to them. All right, he's appealing to them, Elder David. He, he's appealing to the children of Israel not to forget. He's saying to take heed. And, and like your parents or in the past would have told you as a young boy, to look, take heed. What we see here, it says in verse 23, which Sister Gordon just read, it says, Lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God had forbidden thee. What is that talking about here, graven image and likeness and so on? What is that? And what is the covenant that he's asking them not to forget? What is it that you remember? God is asking them to take heed of their covenant obligations. Now, God entered a covenant with Israel. He says, I will be your God and you will be my people. And they were supposed to be a holy nation. They were supposed to live lives representatives, representative of God, the God whom they represent. So God was telling them, look, be mindful of your obligations. Take heed. Watch how you live. Right? You ought to be the light of the world. You ought to be the salt of the earth. You ought to represent God uh, properly. You must really be, live like children of God. Per se. Now, the same is true for us today. We have covenant obligations also. right? We ought to take heed as to how we live. We ought to guard. I remember the quotation in Prophet. She says that we ought to guard the avenues of our souls. That is what we look at. What we listen to. Because like Israel, we are called to live holy lives and what we look at what we listen to what we feast on can affect how we live so we too are called upon to take heed how is my devotional life all of those things affect how we live so we ought to take heed to ourselves god will have a new soul be careful always be mindful that uh, be mindful of the god that we represent always remember your Excellent. And, you know, confession is good for the soul, they say. You know, just this week, I, I caught up with a former university colleague of mine who lives overseas. And we were talking, we hadn't talked for quite a while. And somehow, just talking to him brought back memories of the days of old when I was back doing an undergrad and was on campus, etc. And the lifestyle that I lived then, I was not a Christian. I was not in uh, following Christ. And it brought back memories of things we used to do and the songs we used to listen to and we're talking about early 90s here oh, i guess i gave her my age but anyway and the confession is that you know i actually went on youtube and looked for these things and i was listening to them this week and i was saying what 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 what, what craziness am i doing you know so um it kind of stuck in my head for a while just by speaking to this old friend of mine and you're so right elder david in that we have to guard the avenues of our mind because some things that are in the past we can go back to them. And I think I heard you say some time ago that going back in the past or reverting to something can be negative. But God was saying in Deuteronomy, if you turn back to me, that's a positive thing. And so we've got to guard the avenues of our mind because by certain things that we would have done before, negative things can trigger off some things that we are doing now 
and we will go astray. But getting back on track, yeah, my soul feels better now. <laughs> now, we see here, quite rightly, Ellen David, you're saying that they are to guard the avenues of, the, of their mind, and they, God is saying through Moses that they need to take heed. Because God knows, right? Sister God, what is it that we probably looked at this last week, but just to re refresh our memory, what is it that, or why is it that God is telling them, take heed lest you forget? I understand we just look at the text in detail, but does God know something that they don't know? Oh yes, God knows everything about us. And we must remember that we are born in sin, shaped in iniquity. And so there's that impulse within all of us to gravitate to sin. That's how we were born. It only takes the Holy Spirit um, coming into our hearts. And as he says in the word, circumcising our hearts so that we can have an appetite for the things of God. And just as we keep looking at um, four, there's a part here I need to look at verse six. He says that God is saying, keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which you shall which shall hear these statues. So basically, God is saying, as we listen to his instructions, as we listen to his commandment, which is still relevant today, it was back then and it is still relevant today. As we impart and, and I'm cleave to him, those around us would see not us but they will see jesus living within us and they too will come to know him and this is why god has called us to be his light bearers god has called us to be the conduit of his love and his grace to the world around us now we have been studying repentance last week we studied repentance and God is asking them to take heed lest they forget. And I would like to submit that remembering is a key element of repentance. Because what is repentance? It is turning away from something with the determination not to go back there. And if we are going to refuse to go back to our past, we have to remember. So, uh, Moses is in, a, is in a sense, in order for them to maintain their repentance, remember what happened to your ancestors when they messed up. So I'm saying that is one of the reasons why remembering is important. It's a key element of repentance, of true repentance. If we forget our past mistakes, we are bound to repeat them. All right. And so beautiful. So what does keeping guard or to watch or to to take guard how does that or what does that look like in 2021 how, how do we today who profess to be christians i just gave you something that happened to me during the week how do we as bible believing christians guard the avenues of our hearts and of our minds what are some of the practical things that we can do for someone who's watching out there want to know well you know i I have a challenge as well. So how do we actually do that, um, Elder Gordon? By our daily lives. And it is so instructive that we can see something destructive happening to someone, maybe drinking, someone who likes to drink alcohol. Now, you can be in the company of that person and rather than being drawn into alcohol we can use the opportunity of educating or, or conversing with a person and let them know the destructive elements that alcohol can cause on their entire body system whatever it is in life we can it was paul who was there where he was i think in rome where where they were worshiping all those images and so on bowing to them worshiping them he was amongst them but he used that teachable moment to ask them can this god what can this god do for you 
You're the one that have to feed the God. You're the one that have to polish the God with dust. Go on to God. You're the one that have to do everything. to. What can that God do for you? So though you are part of a community, a society, where we may see wrong happening around us, because we have been trained, or we have been trained in our mind, and being instructive in the word of God, we can use, those are teachable moments that we can use to guide another person to the God that we serve. And the David, the word of God says, thank you, Elder God, the word of God says, Elder David, that the word have I hid in thy heart that I might not sin against thee. How does remembering or, or memorizing or keeping the word of God in our heart help us to, to guard the avenues of our hearts and our minds? Or does it help us at all? Yes, it is so important for us. And this is why it doesn't come, happen overnight. If you notice what Moses does here, Moses repeats, repeats, and he repeats them. When he did that to them, he also followed. There's a channel that follows here. He said, also, teach them to your children. Teach them to your children and instruct your children that they too will teach so the generation coming will understand. Now, let us look at our lives today. Is the Ten Commandments, is God's commandment still applicable to us today? Yet, it, Yes, it is. Because it is God's transcript. It is his character. It is who he is. And so, as we look around us daily, there are so many things that we are craving for. Even this pandemic that we're living in now, there are so many that just want it to end so that we can get back to our normal life. Now, what is that normal life? Is it a life of sin? Is it the things that we enjoy all day when we went all night dance party? What it is that we are in so much hurry for this pandemic to end so that we can get back to the state of normalcy. I pointed to us today that let us get back to the commandments of God. Because as we read Deuteronomy, well, the entire book of Deuteronomy, it speaks to two roads that God is offering us. One that leads to eternal life, one that leads to our destruction, to hell, to ultimate extinction from this world what are we choosing today god offers us life he offers us everlasting life and when we would have connected with god when we would have allowed him to circumcise our heart and his very commandment become our daily food it becomes our daily food then we know should emulate that by our lifestyle because we will be transformed not so much the outside but from within and it will impact those who are around and these are some of the things that help us to guard the avenues of our mind let us be circumspect let us use every opportunity to be conduits to be the channel whereby god's love god's grace can reach even someone on a daily basis. You ask the question, what does guarding look like today? Yes. Go right ahead. But you know, Sister Garden, guarding our hearts, I, I, I've known people who have learned, memorized text after text after text, and they know a great volume of the Word of God by heart. And there was one particular guy I heard a story of who New, practically the whole New Testament by heart. But then when he was pressed to ask to explain and to apply the principles that have been taught by all the things that he would have memorized, it, it, it was very dismally disappointing. And so while it is important for us to, because we're talking about this morning, taking heed and taking heed and guarding the avenues of our hearts and of our minds and of our soul, taking heed, yes. We need to memorize the Word of God because it is important for us to know what the Word of God says. But I want to submit to us this morning that it is even more important for us to understand who God is and what He's saying in His Word. Acts, as we study His Word, Acts, as we remind, as we memorize His Word, for Him to show us the application, for it, for Him to show us how does this, 
help me or how can I show someone to reveal God in this world? Because my personal view is that memorizing scripture alone, while it may assist and help for us to remember as we take heed, it is more important for us to understand what we read and what we memorize by the word of God. I don't know if Elder David wants to come in at this point in time. We're still talking about taking heed yes, with scripture. Actually, what I really wanted to submit in of taking heed is similar to what you said. Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I may not sin against thee. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I may not sin against thee. And, and this is hitting at what you, you have said just now. Now, hiding the word in my heart is not just for hiding its sake. It should be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my... It follows, therefore, as I live on a daily basis... We are still in the great controversy. As I am confronted, we are confronted on a daily basis with, with decisions and choices. And my choices and my decisions must be influenced by the word that I would have hid in my heart. I need to allow the word to be that lamp and that guide. I always tell people, when we study the Bible, we study the Bible with an aim of finding out what God's will is. To find out God's will with the intention of doing it by the aid of his Holy Spirit. It is not just memorizing it, but allowing that word to affect the way we live, our uh, every choice and decision. All right, excellent. And the question, Elder David, as we wind down this morning, is that um, I heard a pastor said once, the more we give away our religion, the more we keep it. Sounds paradoxical, but the more we teach others, the more we tell and we share and we demonstrate the love of God, is the more we become closer drawn to God and see how salvation uh, is, 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 is being experienced in our everyday life. So then my question is, how does telling others of your experience with the Lord, how has it benefited others or how, how has it benefited you, Elder David? Okay, just before we go there, I don't know if you touch this, but in the, um, the admonition uh, to Israel, they were admonished also to teach the word to the children. All right, and the importance of that is that was in an aim, in an effort to preserve the truth for generations to come. So that they were supposed to teach it to the children. God's one of God's means of passing on the truth from generation to generation is through families. And so that leaves us today with an awesome responsibility. We ought to ensure that we teach it to our children, introduce our children properly to Jesus. So that that which is in them, they will take on and in turn pass it on to their children. All right, and in that way, the truth will be preserved. All the only Sabbath keeping that my children are going to know is the Sabbath keeping that we show them. We may slip up, but we know what it is. We have something to go back to. But what they're going to know is what we show them today. We are guardians of the truth. We ought to pass it on to our children so that the truth can continue are down to successive generations yes one of the reasons why i like to teach and, and that i think that is what i like to do more more than preaching is that whenever i teach something i remember it easily whenever i have lessons to do if i sit down and discuss it with my daughter she is the one who i like to discuss with i am in a better position i remember it more easily when it's time to present. So yes, by teaching. And the other thing is, the other thing that that does, I can't be telling you, this is how you're supposed to live, and then I am not living. So I would have found myself advising people on a particular issue, but then when I looked at me, hey, you're not too straight there, you know. If I have any conscience, I have to pull my socks up. So sharing my my experience with others helps me in a lot of ways. It helps me to remember. All right, excellent. All right, Sister Gordon, uh, today we looked at take heed, lest ye forget. And we looked at that passage of scripture and we saw as Elder David just brought in there about that we don't want to just live our lives and then we pass on and we everything dies with us. We want our children and the second generation. And, and I see a real challenge today in this movement of God where the second or the younger generation 
seems to be flagellant. That's a whole different discussion. But what is it today in today's lesson about taking heed lest we forget that you want to leave something with our audience that are watching something something specific something that you, you want to sum up with this morning in terms of the entire lesson for today yes i would like to take that twofold one you spoke to someone who knows the bible can repeat um chapters scriptures and so on but when it comes to application when it comes to lifestyle it's a different thing altogether it doesn't make sense we study and a chapter when a sentence is there that we fail to understand or needs application. So what I would like to leave with the viewing audience today, take God at, at his word and allow small pieces to digest small pieces so that assimilates within the bloodstream and the Holy Spirit resides within, then it makes our daily walk easier. Now, I will also like to leave, I must leave with Deuteronomy chapter 30 and there's a verse here that speaks to me personally. Rather, two verses. God is saying, and if you, I return unto the Lord, if we hearken unto his commandments, verse 3 of Deuteronomy chapter 30 says, and then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations wheresoever we have scattered. We are living presently within captivity of the virus, sin, so many things holding us captive today. What I would like to leave for all of us, try the word of God, learn his commandments, study them, repeat them, remember them, and just don't remember them to, for, to have an archive in the, in the brain that I, I can repeat, but use them to be applicable in our lifestyle. And God says, when we would have adhere to his commandments, that's when our captivity will be taken from us. All right. Thank you so much, Elder David. In a minute or less, could you just give us your parting words for today? God asked Israel to take heed, and that was to take heed of their covenant obligations. What are those? Israel entered into a covenant with God to be a holy nation, to live holy lives, to represent him to the nations. God expects the same of us today. We have entered into a covenant relationship with him to be his people, to live holy says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us uphold our co covenant obligations. Let us remember that we are light and that we ought to shine wherever we go on a daily basis. Let us remember that we are salt, and that we ought to season our surroundings with the love of God wherever we go, so that folks can be drawn to Him to call Him blessed. Excellent. We want to thank you once again for joining us on Whispering Hope once again. And indeed, today, thanks to Elders David and Gordon for bringing some encouraging and some in depth uh, understanding towards the lesson for today. We pray that you continue to view Whispering Hope on a daily basis and even on other times and so we pray that you will continue to grow in christ and as you continue to study the word of god always ask the holy spirit to guide you into understanding the application towards your life and towards understanding the god who have given us all these wonderful words so may god bless you may god continue to keep you thank you once again have a wonderful day <laughs>